Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri and we are here up in my garden here in Zoodesia Zoo up at my house. Oh my goodness and I'm smiling from ear to ear right now because today we are going to be celebrating 900 episodes of Zoo Crafting! And I'm sort of in shock because I'm looking over my garden and I'm going oh yeah well I guess we did put up the fairy lights and I remember when we got the Aki's and you guys remember when Aki like tried to cut my house down? She actually succeeded in destroying a good half of my house and I had to fix it or what about the time that we went and we got Tate for one thing but then what about the time that we got all of our puppies when Pine and Alia and Holly and Ash showed up because my dogs cloned themselves yet again or what about the time that we got the girls my beautiful little maids or when all of the little chips showed up or we got the squicken and I was really thinking you know that we hadn't done too much in the world I was thinking we haven't done too much over three years worth of Zucra and we're getting into year four soon. Oh my gosh, that's just like a little bit stunning if you ask me. But then I started looking around and just seeing all of the little things, even my outfit, when I got this new outfit so that we could do some work over in the Temperate Forest, when we made the summer garden, there's been so many things that we have changed. So yeah, 900 episodes, not bad. And actually... I have, I have something to tell you guys. It's not 900 episodes. Mm -mm. I, I didn't count correctly because I wasn't adding in the dog quest and all of the side quest. And so our good friend Victor, who has been around basically since the very beginning, hi Victor, all those years ago, he did all of the math for me. So technically today isn't supposed to be the 900th celebration. It's supposed to be the 1005th, I think. 1005th or 1006th celebration. So yes, it's not technically 900 it's over a thousand episodes of zoo crafting <laughs> a thousand how did i do that how is that even like possible but well i i miscounted so for today i guess we'll just have to go ahead and settle with celebrating 900 pine lily and alia no she just 900 she says oh my goodness but we'll celebrate 900 episodes and that's why today is a little bit late i know it's very very late normally i have this done almost like 18 hours earlier but i just i had to do a little bit of work i went up to the garden of eden which is where we keep all of our special episode trees planting a special new tree themed to what we did for the last 100 episodes up in our garden and you know I only had it marked for being able to do 900 so I guess it's okay if we just have the 900 tree today it's a good start we can celebrate the 1000th tree some other time and I mean I'm sure eventually we'll figure out a way to count properly right maybe I need to hire a math teacher all right let's go ahead here we'll feed the dog something fancy some pumpkin turkey and peach food what do you guys think about that oh my gosh there's so much new gourmet food we have given the dogs so much new stuff lately i'm gonna go ahead and eat an apple and then a couple egg sandwiches and then we are gonna go up and we will look at the new tree there is a beautiful new tree to celebrate 900 episodes up in the garden of eden so we'll look at that in just a second uh let me go ahead and check in on the girls and the other thing i want to actually work on today is actually cooking up some celebratory cake to give to all of my friends so that's gonna be really fun i want to make a like it's been 900 episodes of zoo crafting celebratory meal for all of my friends so I was thinking we could go through with all of the sugar we've really started to get our hands on and maybe make some delicious cake of some kind like maybe a pineapple upside down cake because that sounds like it's really really celebratory and I love pineapple and I love I love pineapple cake, I think. I really love citrus cakes, actually. They have this delicious citrus cake for sale at one of the places near my house uh, where we go to get, like, vegan uh, baked goods all the time. And every time I see that, like, it's called the Orange Blossom Bundt Cake. And every time it's on sale, <gasps> I am so in love with it. It just is so delicious. So let me see if I can find... Oh, that's all shaped crafting. No wonder I was so confused. So let's see. There is chocolate sprinkles cake. Now, that could be fun under most circumstances. But I feel like it's a super-duper special time so baklava yeah and the pavla and then holiday cake and then we've got some soft serve vanilla ice cream which also sounds kind of amazing and then lemon meringue pie cheesecake is also a favorite of mine what on earth is that? Key lime pie? I didn't even know we had key lime pie. Or French toast. Man, those sound delicious. Or cream cookies. What the heck, a doodle? I didn't even know we had some of these things. Tim Tims. Tim Tams. What are Tim Tams? I think those are something that you guys have over in the UK if you happen to have Tim Tams. Um, let's see. So I know somewhere in here there's apple pie. Get off the counter, sweetie. One of the dogs is taking advantage of me being distracted. Uh, baked, baked beans. Oh, man. I can do so much with sugar. 
I have been missing out not having sugar. Look at all of these things, including gummy bears. We need to make so many gummy bears and sell gummy bears for the bear, um, the bear exhibit, the black bear exhibit. That would be so fun. Manju. Oh my gosh. And this isn't even getting into the things that I really want to make because what I really want to make are cupcakes. And I actually want you guys to help me come up with some delicious cupcake flavors using the things that we have, the crops we have in this world, and maybe some of your own awesome ideas. Apple cider. Where the heck is my pineapple? <laughs> pineapple, there it is. Pineapple upside down cake. There we go. That looks like something worth celebrating if you ask me. So we might make some pineapple upside down cake. We might make some other awesome things. But I would love to come up with some really fun like cupcake recipes that we could make. Like an actual cupcake recipe that is pretty simple using the Minecraft sort of creation. But I want to start experimenting with making my own mods. And I thought what better way to celebrate than by celebrating 1000 episodes by trying to learn how to make cupcakes. So I wanted to draw on some ideas from you guys to be able to come up with some really cool cupcake names maybe some cupcake recipes like they have a what is possibly like a pineapple upside down cake at the same bakery that i go to for the orange blossom bundt cake they have what's called the hummingbird cupcake and that is actually basically like a pineapple cupcake with pink frosting on top and like this little hummingbird wing thing that they do with some uh, leaves and it's really cute so i would love to come up with some cupcake ideas with you guys some cool cupcake names so we will definitely be looking into making some delicious cake to celebrate with my friends and i really 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 want to come up with some cool cupcake ideas like maybe triple chocolate fudge decked cupcake uh because i do want to try to make it into a mod thing so that we can have some actual cupcakes in our world and maybe even find a way to be able to share them with you guys so i would love to do that so let me know if you guys have any cupcake ideas we'll talk more about it when we come back over here but i definitely need to put down some of my dandelions because I have another dandelion that the little hedgehog has given me. Look at all of these. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. And then let's go ahead and put these away. And then we're going to go ahead and pop on up. And how did I get a pineapple? I was so confused. I was like, I was talking about pineapple upside down cake and suddenly I had a pineapple. Oh, look, and it looks like my mail is gone. Good. So Jude has gone off to deliver that note to the blacksmith. <sighs> I was told that he's a little bit cranky and has an ego the size of like Jupiter, but he's also one of the absolute best blacksmiths in our world. And if I can attract him over to living in the village of light or in my zoo, then we would have a wonderful resource to be able to grow the villages. And we would have a great resource to be able to go to for all of the blacksmithery needs that I might need because he can really do anything, including make me a brand new, absolutely fantastic silk touch pickaxe with a moss handle. I know what I want. I just am not talented enough to make it. So hmm, we'll have to see if he'll accept my offering and be intrigued enough to start communications with me to at least make my pick, if not move here. So we'll look into that later. That's another thing we'll look into later. But for now, let's go ahead, come on up to my beautiful Garden of Eden, where we keep our wonderful trees. And I will show you guys the 900 tree that I made a little bit ago with Nightlock over here. Because you're a good kitty, Nightlock. Oh gosh. And then I think, did, oh, I thought these were cherries for a second. I was like, oh, we can gather up those cherries for the pineapple upside down cake too but all right we're gonna come on over come on puppies come on you guys you can do it good puppies good puppies oh good job all yeah all right everybody sit down so you don't wander around the garden too much oh all right stay there pine don't walk into the essence berries that would hurt and then right over right wait a second okay wait a second this is my tree i was going to show you but wait 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 what's this what's this how big is this? Woo! I could jump off here. Okay. <gasps> is this another sacred oak sapling? The tree of adventures? 1,000? Is this my 1,000th tree? Is this my tree for 1,000 adventures? Oh my gosh, it actually grew. I didn't think I'd be able to grow it. I didn't think I'd have time to grow it, but look at the size of it. It even has a cow, a complimentary cow under it. Oh my gosh. Wait a second. I'm like walking on a little platform. <gasps> look at this. It comes out from the Garden of Eden. Oh, so it ends right back here. This used to just be a cliffside. Is this a sacred sapling? It it has to be. It has to be. It must be one of my, like, village of light tree sacred saplings. Look at the size of it. I can't think of anything better to celebrate 1,000 adventures for than another sacred sapling. That's so special. And then it has a little, it has a little platform that comes on out and comes on down. And then, Sylph? Sylph, what are you doing over here? What is, what is that noise? Sylph, what is this? What is this? Sylph? I see you're looking at it. What are you doing up? 
Oh my goodness, Siri! There you are! I figured I'd find you here eventually. This place is overflowing with your green energy. Oh my, I can't believe how surprising this is. I knew you had a passion for greenery and worked hard, but this? What a fantastic creation you've made! Wait, I made this? I, this wasn't here, I just planted my willow tree for the 900th episode, and then I came back over here and there's this gigantic sacred oak sapling over here. What do you, what do you mean? Oh, you mean you didn't do this on purpose? Oh, well, I could see how that could happen. You have so much love and passion for what you do, but discovering how to direct the power of love in yourself and the things that call to your heart... Well, that is a task that takes many their entire lives to try to discover. Don't worry about those details for now, then. We'll talk another time about the way that love of yourself and love of the things you adore in the world can change everything. But for now, just know that yes, this tree is the result of your passion for the beauty of the world. Specifically, plants. Not surprising, considering it is you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm sick of plants. <laughs> no, I do love how beautiful plants are. So thank you. Oh, you mean I made this though? <laughs> I know you do. It is one of the things that has drawn me here. But again, we'll talk about that another time, perhaps in another dog quest. For now, why don't you celebrate by appreciating this beautiful new tree? You grew it all through the strength of your love and hard work after all. And what a wonderful tree it is. Very hungry for glowstone pollen to help it flower, though, I can tell. It has even blossomed these lovely little gardens to attempt to attract special pollinators to help it grow. And these aren't even its usual flowers. What a clever tree. Perhaps if it collects enough glowstone dust, it will be able to attract the pollinators it needs to help it bloom? Oh, I'll have to see if I can talk to it. Oh my goodness, so f Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, my tree! I want to hug it. I have tears in my eyes because this is another tree. This is the big representation. I can't think of a better way to top off an entire garden where every single one of the trees that you see here represents 100 days of adventures with you guys. 100 adventures we've gone on. I mean, look at all of the leaves falling. I can't even imagine a better representation to cap it all off on 1,000 adventures than a sacred sapling. A really big, beautiful sacred sapling that looks like we can walk down and we can just kind of walk next to it. Look at this. Oh my gosh. I wonder if as we go on more adventures, we'll be able to see it grow. Maybe this platform, we can add to this platform, make it bigger. Look, you can see Zomberry Village from here. Oh my goodness. I wonder if this platform will eventually go up above Zomberry Village. And then when the village expands, we can walk above it and be like, hi, Junior. Hi, JJ from the garden. Oh, I wonder if eventually we would go on so many adventures. It might even expand over to the Nymphia Garden. So you could get to the Nymphia Garden from the Garden of Eden. That would be so wonderful. I guess I'd have to go on lots more adventures to be able to fuel the tree though. I guess apparently my passion for greenery and all of our adventures have made this grow. This is fantastic. And what is this little garden? So apparently it's grown these little gardens here. The tree did this? I can hear like almost some sort of little tinkling magic-y sound. Oh, there it is again. <gasps> That's so pretty. Oh, wow, and the leaves moving back there. It's like it's trying to attract pollinators the way that you'll kind of like put out a really beautiful flower or blossom to try to allure somebody towards you. I wonder, is it, am I the pollinator? Am I like a big giant butterfly or a moth that it's trying to attract to it? What happens if I come up to it? <gasps> okay, all right, all right. Glowstone dust for a glow flower. Glowstone dust, a whole stack for pollen of light. Okay, that's what she meant. They've grown some sort of tiny garden. So because the tree knows that it needs help being able to attract enough glowstone pollinators to be able to blossom, I guess if it gets enough of those little gardens and it can gather up enough of the pollen, then it'll be able to blossom the way that the Tree of Light did. Oh, that sounds amazing. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. I wonder if it'll grow more little gardens as we go on more adventures. And then there might be all sorts of different kinds of plants I can come over and maybe help it like pollinate for and be able to grow. That would be so much fun. Okay. And we could get glow flowers then. 
So glowstone dust for glow flowers. It looks like it'll give us glow flower blossoms if we can come and bring the glowstone dust pollen that it needs. And eventually it can make enough pollen of light that I think we might be able to help the tree bloom. Uh, I'll let Sylph talk to the tree. That's what, that's what forest nymphs are for, right? So I'll let her go ahead and communicate with it. I'm glad to see her awake. I'm sure we'll have a chance to talk to her hopefully, hopefully a little bit later, maybe when it's time to bathe the dogs again. Ah, oh, but what a, what a beautiful discovery, you guys. I love that. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. It's just so fun being able to see our world grow and change every day with every adventure. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. And not only sharing my passion for the natural world, not only watching as we have more amazing characters, more amazing people come and occupy our world, other people come on and become part of our, our like living server team, building, growing, inhabiting, enjoying, embracing, adventuring, uh, but the village growing, being able to look back, that's what I was thinking about. Why does it matter what we do here? And it matters for one thing because of our zoo. It matters being able to share our zoo with you guys and teach you guys, even if it's just in tiny little amounts that add up over time, how important the natural world is and just little lessons I can teach you guys about black bears and red wolves, uh, arctic wolves, timber wolves, things that we'll be adding in the future, things I can teach you guys about Gouldian finches and how they nest, all of those little details, as well as the details of the adventures that we go on with our villagers and our villages. It's about all sorts of things, and I guess a little bit just about sharing my raw passion for all the adventure and for the plants, but we talked about that a lot, so I won't dwell on that too much today. I definitely want to see if maybe I could get a little glow flower garden, because there is actually that glow flower that I have down in my basement, though unfortunately, the glow flowers, these ones at least, are being... <sighs> guarded by vampire penguins so i may have to solve the vampire penguin problem and then i can get the glow flower dust and then we can come and see if uh, every every so often new gardens like this are available for us to be able to get plants from so that's definitely a plan but all right there's our amazing tree of 1000 adventures talk about beautiful and I'll show you guys the tree that I actually made, which is this one right here. And this is actually a very special willow tree because in the last 100 episodes, they've been a little bit different from all of those 100s of episodes, hundreds of episodes, I guess I should say. Those episodes, even if I went through a lot, I was able to keep going every single day. And this year is the first year where it was just too much in the end, and I wasn't able to do it every day. And thankfully, that's changed this month, and I have been able to be here in the world doing an adventure every day, and I'm already feeling so much more at peace. And seeing those of you who are still here after all of these years being part of the zoo crafting adventures, even though it's not always, not always zoo building, <laughs> it's not always village building, but it's going to become something that's kind of a mix of both and even better. Even though sometimes it's just me talking about personal things going on. Sometimes it's me rambling on the entire time about facts about an animal I'm super excited about. You guys are here for it. And I'm so glad that we're back to the daily adventures, even if they are a bit of work. But this year was kind of special because there were a lot of very difficult things with my health and there were a lot of very difficult things with personal loss in the family, loss of some family dreams, loss of some family members that really had a big impact on me. And for a little bit there, between all of that and my stage fright that I got wondering, am I doing enough in the zoo? Am I keeping you guys entertained enough? Am I keeping you company enough? Am I teaching you enough? Am, am I making a difference? Is this doing anything? Is there a point to what I do here? Is there a point to who I am and being here every day? And I just feel in my gut there is a point to it. There is such a deep important point to showing up here every day. No matter what you use these adventures for, no matter what they fill in your life, I just feel like there is such a point. And I think because zoo crafting means so many different things, comedy, just something to listen to in the background while you work, something to get you through an immensely hard time in life where you may be going through things that you're not sure you can endure. It means something different to everyone. Educational opportunities, the thing that they need to wrap themselves up in a beautiful green world full of goofy adventures and goofy Siri running around excited to cook things for her friends. It means something different to everyone. And so sometimes I get a little bit overwhelmed 
trying to make sure I can run around and be all of that. And I get to doubt myself. And you guys have heard that a lot recently. So the last 100 episodes, I wanted to make a weeping willow that wasn't so much weeping, but just thoughtful. A thoughtful weeping willow or something like that, you know? So that's why it's blue. And that's why it has willow leaves. Because I really needed time to kind of think about all those things, to think about why it matters, to think about why I matter, to think about why these adventures matter. And I don't know if I have the answers and I don't know if I'm always going to do it right, but I've started to do them every day. And I think that through the day on day on day practice, hopefully I'll find the way forward. Hopefully I'll find myself and the answer of what zoo crafting is. It'll be it'll be amazing discoveries, amazing, unexpected, fanciful discoveries mixed with a lot of real life science and a passion for the natural world and stories about my years taking care of wild animals and helping out on big cat rescue sanctuaries and things like that. And it'll be a mixture of the friendship and companionship of the other people on our server and taking them gifts and seeing their builds. It'll be a mixture of the companionship of our community and seeing how we add in new areas that we're able to set up because of you guys and like the way we have all of the chickaboos from you guys helping the chickaboos hatch. All of those things. I don't know what it'll be, but I know I'm going to keep moving forward. And so I made this tree, this willow tree, as a dedication to that. So this is a moment to dream, the 900th celebration tree. It's a willow tree mixed in with cherry blossoms and put down here with some stepping stones on top of the water and some lily pads. And it's just, it's tucked away right in the back corner, not even where I reserved a spot for it, but just tucked away because I figured this is perfect. This is how I felt when I was overwhelmed. I wanted to just sit I wanted to be surrounded by the peace and the greenery. I wanted to have somewhere where I can just set my back up against something and feel kind of nestled away, tucked away safely, where I could have a moment to figure out what it all meant. A moment to dream. A moment to bring my dreams back to life. A moment to think about how I want to be more than just a silly woman who rambles <laughs> running around in a blocky world. I want to be able to teach you guys about, I keep thinking, you know, facts about what black bears eat, facts about why an ostrich is so cool. I want to teach you guys those things, but I'm getting to realize that my true strength maybe just lies in showing up every day and being myself, even when it's goofy and makes mistakes and gets distracted, because it, maybe that can be a lesson for you guys and the joy of just being yourself. And maybe that's really what zoo crafting is beyond everything, even more than being about the animals, which I, I didn't know that could happen, but hey, I am going to focus more on the animals. I am going to focus more on the village building, and I'm going to focus more on just the stories that naturally develop in our world, and I'll just do my best. But again, that's what I mean. The root really is just again and again coming down to doing my best, and that's why I made this tree, so that I could just think about the lessons I learned when I took a little bit of time away from zoo crafting. And how that didn't really fix things. That just made it more difficult to get back into the groove and made me feel even further away from my dream. And somehow, you have to take a moment and take a breath and just have a moment because it's just a thought. And then sometimes you just jump back in and you keep going and you kind of just have to find your dream. So yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm not supposed to teach you guys uh, like how to become a biologist. Maybe I'm not supposed to inspire each and every one of you to use a reusable bag at the grocery store, even though I really wish if I could do that, that would change the world. That would be amazing. Maybe I'm just supposed to be me and maybe I'm just supposed to go on these adventures. Maybe I'm just supposed to create. Maybe some days it's supposed to be about the villagers and the NPCs and some days it's supposed to be about actually getting the zoo gosh darn built and maybe some days it's about making ice cream for my friends and maybe some days it's about bathing my dogs and every day it's about trying to show you guys how much you matter and i guess one of the biggest lessons i've learned over three and a half years of doing this transforming my life from a very shy anxious nanny taking care of my cousins and living in a new state i didn't know anything about into who i am now one of the biggest lessons i've learned is that really just being yourself and showing up and showing you guys that I can have fun and be happy and creative and imaginative just as I am. Just truly embracing all of that. I think it's done the most good, even more so than teaching you guys that bats are mammals and how to tell a stalactite and a stalagmite apart. So 
I guess even though I wish I could say that I'm a good biology teacher, there's some deeper lessons going on here too, hidden behind all the goofiness. So there's my serious message. Ah, I just, I feel like I could rinse myself off. Alia, Lily Pine, Night Frost, or Night Frost, sorry, <laughs> Nightlock, you're not a warrior cat. My apologies, Nightlock. <laughs> oh, gracious me. So there's my serious message on top of so many special episodes recently where we have had serious messages. And I am ready to just shake it all off. I'm ready to shake it loose. Do, 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 do. Shake it off. I am looking forward to seeing how this tree is going to grow. And I'm also looking forward to getting to work on my actual zoo. So tomorrow, I think we will maybe make, I know, right puppies? We will maybe make up some treats for my friends or I may save that for the Saturday special actually so that we can go and visit them and drop those things off at their houses or at least the mailbox over in Relic Ruins on Saturday. And tomorrow, hopefully we'll be able to go down and we will get some work done in the Black Bear exhibit because we'll be able to get in here. We'll be able to make sure that the picnic pickup stop is finito and then we'll be able to show off all of the work. I've done so much much work down there at the black bear exhibit and we will start putting in the big gigantic tree trunk i want them to have to play in so yep lots of work to do in the zoo <laughs> lots of work to do in the zoo and just a lot of fun and a lot of joy to have so i'll see you guys tomorrow and we will share even more adventures i cannot wait to see where the next 1000 will take us so until then guys bye bye